Who you guys ready for your special guest? Yeah. Oh, he is on Twin Cities News Radio at 11.30 a.m. I want you to give it up for Benjamin Cruzy. Hey, everybody. Are you having a good night? This is a really good audience for a Labor Day weekend. Don't you have families to go to? How many of you have been to the uh, Minnesota State Fair? Wow. What's your favorite foods? We got uh, the cheese curds, Martha's uh, cookies, deep fried pickles, maybe some uh, mini donuts. Ooh, deep oh, don't get me started with the bacon. Oh, you can see. I've eaten my share of bacon in the day. Uh, I, unfortunately, because I work in radio, have to go to the fair every single day. So I have been to the fair every single day this year. Oh, so bad to me. Oh, because I get to go hang out with all you lovely Minnesotans. You passive aggressive, evil Minnesotans. <laughs> I pass the time, and I say evil because uh, I play a little bingo like game whenever I go to the fair. I grab a list of the seven deadly sins, and I don't leave until I've checked off every single one of those sins. First one's easy, first one's always gluttony. You see that before you even get through the gates. That's the free space on my bingo game. Sometimes if I don't see it immediately, I'll go grab some cheese curds and then knock it off myself. Sloth, sloth over the last 10 years. All of these uh, scooters. You see the people on scooters, the 40 year olds who, you can walk. You're just lazy. Come on. So sloth, gluttony, uh, if you want to get uh, envy and uh, greed off your list, you got to go down to the midway because you'll always find the envy and the little 10-year-old girls that want that giant stuffed bear that you're never going to get because you need like a thousand tickets and that evil, greedy, carny, he's rigged all the games, making your little girl cry, evil. Lust and pride, those are a little more difficult because there's not a lot of lust after at the fair. <laughs> a lot of fat people at the fair. <laughs> and I'm sweaty. Yesterday it rained, so I'm rainy and sweaty and fat. That's not lustful. <laughs> but how many here, how many here uh, of you do have uh, daughters within the age of, let's say, uh, 13 to 17? Okay, we got one guy in the back. How do you let your daughter out like that? Do you see what she's wearing? She's wearing a t-shirt down to here and shorts down to here. That's pride. She's very proud of her young little body. And there's all of these confused 15-year-old boys looking. They're all over the fair. These girls, I don't understand these shorts these uh, teenagers are wearing. They're jean shorts that are cutoffs, but they go up to their navels. <laughs> It's that I'm gonna be sexy up to here, but I'm gonna be prude and not show you my belly button. So their pride, you've got the 15 year old horny kids just going like this, and the creepy old men going like this. There's your lust. And that leaves wrath. I think I got them all. Wrath is last, and this is what happened today with me. Because it rained last night at the fair, everyone went, oh well, we'll go tomorrow. Well, everybody decided to go today. And you couldn't walk. All of the streets clogged up with humanity, clogged up with fat, like giant clumps of cholesterol in their dying hearts. These people on the streets, you couldn't get anywhere. I gotta go to work, I gotta be on the radio at the fair, let me through. I was very, very wrathful. But I was happy because I could check that off and leave for the day. Can't stand people walking around. They're not going anywhere. These are people, they're not walking, they're moseying. Oh. They're looking in directions, they're not, oh, I wonder what do you mean should eat that? Oh, I didn't, is there the milk of both over here? Or where did they birth the little baby? I want to see a calf come out of a cow. No, you don't, you just ate. <laughs> they're all looking at their cell phones. I wonder where that booth is. I make fun of cell phones, but. I love technology. 
You know what's coming up? Uh, it's, it's Labor Day this weekend, but you know what's coming up on the 9th? Apple's announcing their new iPhones. And I'm going to be one of those that gets them. And here's why I love the iPhone. Because it brags about all of the technology it's killed off. You ever look at the icons on your phone? Phone icon. It's a little uh, hand receiver. When's the last time you used a phone with a hand receiver? Maybe at work? I haven't used one in about 20 years. Your mail program on the phone? Little envelope? Other than the IRS. And that's maybe every other year. I'm sending them an envelope to the IRS. That's the only time I like an envelope. Camera? When's your camera look like that? The big DSLR fancy, oh, I'm going to get you in focus, take your clothes off, baby kind of camera. No, everything you use is now a big black rectangle. But that would make all the icons confused. You wouldn't know what they get. I, uh, I love technology, but it has uh, gotten a little out of hand. When I was uh, young, we didn't have uh, great technology. The best was in the early 90s, uh, my parents were driving us down to a Wisconsin Badgers game in Madison, Wisconsin. And we were told, this is cool. you got to see the technology in the bathroom. Because this was the first time we've ever seen the toilet that flushes itself. <laughs> and the faucet that turns itself on. And the towel dispenser that hands you a towel. And we were like, oh my God, we're living in the future. 1992 is madness. <laughs> but what has it turned us into? A bunch of germaphobes, a bunch of hypochondriacs freaking out over every little thing in there. You know who you are. How many, oh, well, this, how many, uh, show of hands, how many of you here poo? How many people here use the bathroom? Not that many. <laughs> I was positive it would be a high percentage of people. How many women put their hands up? You know how it is. You get to the urinal. Man, I don't know how it works in the ladies' room. But you get to the urinal, you do this, you walk away. Except for touching your schmeckle, you don't have to touch anything. But if they invented a piece of technology that automatically took that out, no guy would leave there. There would be a line, finally, a line to the men's room for the technology that takes your schmuck out. But you, you, you use the urinal, you don't have to touch it. Your hands, except for what you touch down here, still relatively germ-free, kind of. You walk over to the, to the faucet, the faucet, I magic eye no longer works. It stopped working a long time ago. You're not doing this. Where do I put my hands for the water? Give me some water. I got germs on my hands. Getting the paper towels. And then what happens? The door. There's no automatic door in the bathroom. Now, because everyone's hypochondriacs, they go, oh, well, we'll help you out. We'll put a little piece of metal on the bottom of the door so you can open it with your foot. Or maybe you're walking around like you're going into surgery after scrubbing your hands. They put a little piece of metal right up here so you can open it up with your forearm. But more often than not, you'll get one of these assholes. They'll take one of the paper towels, because that's sterile. It's in the same room as all the other bacteria. Take the, take the paper towel, open up the door, go through the door, and because there's no trash can over here, they will just drop, and you'll have a pile of paper towels in the corner from all the people that are too scared to touch a handle. Bacteria are our friends. You need to, you need to fall in love with bacteria. Did you know in the human body right now, there are 10 times more bacteria cells than human cells? That sounds disgusting. I can make it more disgusting. That's five pounds of bacteria in every single one of you, you sick fucks. <laughs> I was talking to a friend about this the other day, and they said, I know I've got bacteria. I know that you eat them in yogurt, and they're, they're good for you, but these are eagle bacteria. They're different because they come from poop. Imagining poop on everything you touch. Well, I've got, I've got some bad news, everybody. Where do you keep your toothbrush? 
Nine times out of ten, I bet it's right next to that machine that eats your poop. <laughs> You're brushing with poop, people. It's a shit-eating grin. And so if you think you're better than everyone else by opening up the door with a towel so that you don't get sick, well, you're full of shit. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night.